my friends welcome back to my channel it is december and that means it is time for a new seasonal classics recommendation video i have done a winter one last year but i have new recommendations so we are going to go with these i really like doing those videos and so without further ado i'm going to start with my first recommendation and that is anna karenina by leo tolstoy i actually read this last christmas break so that might be why i'm biased towards it being a winter read but also i think it is this one follows unhappy families, I think, which is really cheesy to say because Leo Tolstoy, the first line is all happy families are alike, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. I think it kind of does follow unhappy families. I think the main sort of stories that we're following are one, Anna Karenina, of course, who is a married woman who starts an affair with Count Vronsky. And we also follow Constantine Levin, who is a man that is sort of trying to find his happiness, who wants a family, and who really struggles a lot. I feel like I always poke fun at Levin just because I honestly, I really don't like him as a character, which is probably not selling Anna Karenina, but I'm going to get to the parts where I just say that I think that although this is not my favorite Tolstoy, War and Peace is my favorite Tolstoy, I think. And even though I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, I do think Tolstoy is just a master in delving into his character's psychology. I think he's a master at writing human emotion. I think he's a master at descriptions. I think he's a master at writing relationships. He is just a genius. And every single like book that I read by him, I am like, wow, Tolstoy did it again. He really put these emotions on the page. and. I can't even believe that he did this because it's pure genius, I think. And so that is why I really like Anna Karenina, even though it did disappoint me a bit because my expectations were so, so high for this book specifically because it's Anna Karenina, I feel like is very, very hyped for good reason, but it did disappoint me a bit. But that being said, it's still on this list. I still highly, highly recommend it because I do love Leo Tolstoy. And I think the movie as well, the adaptation. I saw the one with Keira Knightley. I really liked it. I think that's also a good winter watch. I think a lot of the scenes take place in a very cold Russian winter. I think a lot of the settings work and you are going to be able to notice from this list. But for me, for the winter, I either want the biggest, chunkiest book you can find or a short story that feels like a little Christmas Eve night read by the fireside. I don't have a fireplace, but that's what I would imagine. Those are the two extremes that I like my winter classics to be under. And so Anna Karenina falls under the really huge chunky classic that I think is perfect for winter. The next one is Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. It actually doesn't fall under the huge chunky classic or the small short story, so I'm already contradicting myself. Honestly, okay, this is kind of just like my pick because it's very, very sad. If you want to be gloomy in the winter, which is probably not what we need when the temperatures drop and the sunlight goes away, but if you would like to add to the gloom and the doom and all of that, read you The Obscure by Thomas Hardy because whoa there, Thomas Hardy did it again. It follows Jude and we follow Jude's entire life from childhood. We meet him as a young boy. He's very, very ambitious. He wants to go to Christminster College. He was not born into money and this is the Victorian era and so upward mobility is pretty limited at the time. So we sort of see him have these very, very big ambitions and his ambitions sort of get pushed aside for different reasons and a lot of different things happen to Jude over the course of his life. And it is incredibly sad, but I think it is a masterpiece book. I think it is not my favorite Hardy. My favorite Hardy is Tess of the D'Urbervilles, but second favorite for sure. I think it is just masterfully done in its exploration of failed ambitions and its exploration of the things that we strive for and the exploration of marriage is incredibly, incredibly interesting in this because Jude sort of has different marriage situations. I don't really want to go too in depth because it's kind of spoilery, but it does explore what it means to be married, whether the legal act of marriage actually constitutes a bond between two people and sort of what does it mean to be trapped essentially in this relationship. Does the legal act of marriage constitute a bond that is going to last until death? That kind of thing. Very, very interesting. Thomas Hardy always sort of like put social commentary into his book that I'm very surprised by because it was the Victorian era and here he was writing like incredibly hard-hitting critiques of society. I don't know if he just like masked it well enough. I don't know, but I'm like, wow, Thomas Hardy, you really went there. But he did, he does explore a lot of interesting aspects of class mobility, of marriage, 
a lot of interesting things are happening in GD Obscure. I really like it, but I will just put the warning out there that it is very, very sad. And a certain event happens towards the end that is incredibly, incredibly tragic. And so if you are not in the seasonal mood for that, if you need happier books, because again, temperatures drop, the sunlight goes away, I understand that winter can be a not the happiest time because of all of the changes that happen in the weather and in the sunlight. So if this is going to make any of that worse, maybe don't read it at this time. It is very, very heavy. But if you would like a book that is on the heavier side, I would highly recommend you The Obscure. Thomas Hardy is one of my favorite authors by far. Another genius, I think. I feel like I dropped that so casually. I'm like, they're a genius, they're a genius, they're a genius. But it's probably safe to say about Tolstoy and Hardy, I think. But would highly recommend it. I think it's a good one. The next one that I have is another chunky Russian classic. And that is The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This one follows, it's actually also pretty, pretty heavy. Not in the same way that Jude is. I don't think it's as tragic, but it's... It's pretty deep because it follows three brothers, the Karamazov brothers, Ivan, Dmitri, and Alyosha. And it pretty much follows their like spiritual journeys, pretty much, which sounds very, very deep. I took a class that was entirely focused on this book and it counted as like a philosophy elective because it is very, very philosophical. It is also incredibly psychological. I think Dostoevsky really delves deep into psychology and again into philosophy. You can really delve deep into a lot of what Dostoevsky is doing in this book. But to give a sort of general overview, it follows these three brothers and I keep saying, and their spiritual journey. That's really all I can say, I guess. It's just such a complex book. Each brother has their own story. Each, each brother has moments of growth and difficulties and they are all very, very different. It's going to give like a very crude description of the three brothers, but should I do that? But maybe I should. Pretty much how I see them is Ivan is the pessimist intellectual. Dmitri is the impulsive like mess of the family. And then Alyosha is the one that has it together, tries to help his brothers out, but can't really succeed all that much. That's my very crude assessment of the three brothers. The mess, the intellectual, and Alyosha, who's the one that like has it together. But it's very hard to say what it's about because there are so many just things going on within it. I would just recommend that you read it. I think it's Dostoevsky's masterpiece. That's also not like an original thought at all. I think that's just what is widely considered to be Dostoevsky's masterpiece. I think it is considered his best novel by basically everyone. I don't know how much disagreement there is around that. So it's not an original thought at all, but I very much love it. I've only read Crime and Punishment and The Brothers Karamazov, but The Brothers Karamazov, there's just something special about it. I've never read a book like it. I think just the exploration of philosophy and psychology, people trying to find themselves is truly unlike anything I've ever read. The next one that I have is a Shakespeare. And honestly, a lot of Shakespeare could be suited for winter. I think particularly the comedies for some reason, like Twelfth Night seems like a good one, or just insert any comedy here perhaps, but the one that I'm going to choose is actually one of the romance plays, and that is The Winter's Tale by Shakespeare, which I probably didn't need to say, but I said it, so there's that. And did I cheat by just picking the Shakespeare that has the word winter in it? Maybe, but we're gonna go with it. I also just think though that it has the most holiday, magical, festive season vibes. And it might be because Father Time is literally in the play. He has like a whole speech. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But this one follows two best friends, Polixenes and Laertes. They were friends from childhood. And Polixenes comes to visit Laertes. Laertes is married to Hermione. There is a very weird moment in the play where like a switch goes off in Laertes' head and all of a sudden he thinks that his friend and his wife are having an affair rapidly rapidly deteriorates from there he gets so incredibly jealous it just rapidly goes downhill but because it's a romance it's not a tragedy so it's not something like king lear where it starts deteriorating and then it keeps just plummeting into depths of despair you didn't know were possible it kind of is like a mix between a tragedy and a comedy so while a tragedy moves towards disorder and a comedy moves towards order the romance play or at least this one particularly moves towards disorder in the beginning and it's like we're watching a horror show and then it slowly moves towards order in the second half of the play because it is not a tragedy we can expect resolution from a romance play and so that is the trajectory of it the reason why i think it's a good winter play is because hermione's son is like tell me a winter's tale 
and because father time is in it and because it just it's a very like magical shakespeare play i would love to see this on the stage i think this is actually the one that i would most like to see on the stage because it just feels very very magical to me i don't know it just has like a certain certain something a certain je ne sais quoi that is magical but i would highly recommend that you read it watch a performance of it it's great i think it's perfectly suited for winter maybe shakespeare intended that with the title i don't really know but can't ask him so we're just gonna put it on this list next one is gonna seem a little weird if you've heard my thoughts on this book before it is walden by henry david thoreau the author i love to hate i really think that he is just I have some issues with Henry David Thoreau. I think he's a hypocrite, first of all, which is really leading up to my recommendation very smoothly, I know. But I think he's a hypocrite. His tone really irks me sometimes. But I will say that there are parts of Walden that I really liked. And I do like Walden as a work, and I think it's worth reading at least once in your life. And I think a good time to read it is in the winter because although he spends, I should say what Walden follows. Walden follows Henry David's Thoreau year living off the land in Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts. Um, he lived in this log cabin that he built by himself and it was just an exercise in sort of trying to live completely apart from society. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. He literally didn't. I think he was like squatting in the cabin. I think that is like a fact. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what he was doing. I think he had food delivered to him. I want to say he had visits from his mother and like visitors, but all that being put aside, that's not what's in Walden. Walden is him like toughing it out in the woods for a year, learning how to live apart from society. And I think a lot of the sentiments in it are just important sentiments. I think they're written in a really pretentious way, but I think it does hold true to sort of just simplify your life. I think he says like simplify, simplify. I think it does hold true, especially in the age that we're living in now when everything is so just a lot. We are constantly just told that we need a lot of things and i think it is kind of important to remind ourselves that what do we really need to survive at least i think that's just my personal opinion so i do think walden is worth the read even though his tone is kind of funny i it makes me laugh sometimes again he is the author i love to hate i did go visit walden pond and pay my respects to henry david thoreau and i have visited his grave so clearly our relationship is not composed entirely of bad blood I would recommend this for winter because I think the winter scenes in the book are really the ones that were the most vivid to me when he's describing the ice and the coldness and the bitter chill. It is the most vivid to me, I think, even though it does sort of go through all of the seasons. I think it would be most suited for winter just because of those vivid, vivid depictions of the pond freezing over and the coldness is what I remember a year later after reading it and so I think it's suited for winter. I feel like all of my recommendations are like caveat I actually hate this but no I don't. I don't hate Henry David Thoreau I promise. It's just I do want to qualify some of these recommendations that I'm making because Walden is not a favorite book and it has a high potential to irk you I think but I would still recommend it because I think it's worth the read. Last Russian recommendation on this list is The Overcoat by Nikolai Gogol, which is a short story. This one follows a government clerk whose days are very, very monotonous. He goes to work, he does his job, he goes home, he has the same dinner every single day for years and years and years. One day he's walking through the very cold streets of St. Petersburg and he notices he needs a new coat because he can feel the air coming through his jacket and his coat can't be mended so he needs a new coat and the idea of getting a new coat becomes his thing to work towards the idea of saving for this coat to have this beautiful nice new coat becomes his life's purpose almost it is very obsessive and i think it just raises questions of the things we work towards of like what truly matters in life of like what we place value on in life and whether in the grand scheme of things if those are the important things of life in life i think it is a great short story i think dostoevsky is quoted as saying that we all came out of goggles overcoat or something of that nature it is a classic classic short story within russian literature I would highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I did read it last, you know, I read it in the summer, but it's only like 
20 pages, I think. Definitely read it if you are looking for a short story for this winter. Final one is Silas Marner by George Eliot. Again, not my favorite Eliot, but it is a short story and I think it is very, very suited for winter. This one follows Silas Marner, who is an old recluse pretty much. He does not associate with society at all. His only purpose is to work and to get his gold coins so he can stack up the gold coins and count them at night by himself. He doesn't have family, he doesn't have friends. He is just by himself in his little cabin. One day, this little baby girl comes up to his cabin and he takes her in. He takes on that father role immediately and they grow incredibly close. It is an incredibly close father-daughter bond that they have. And it is just such a heartwarming story, even if it's not my favorite Eliot for other reasons, because I think George Eliot can sort of go on digressions sometimes and just focus on characters that I don't really like. And in a short story, it's like, okay, can we please get to the point? But I do really, really love Silas's character and his arc and the scenes that involve him and his daughter specifically. It's also just my favorite trope ever like found families. I loved Heidi when I was little for the same reason. It's just been my favorite kind of heartwarming story is when people find each other they're not related by blood and people who maybe don't have a family or just anyone finds each other in a story and they become like family. It is just found families are my favorite favorite trope ever. I feel like I can never get tired of it. Just when people come together that are not related by blood but that end up really really loving each other and caring for each other like family. Incredible trope. Such a heartwarming Christmas story I think. I think it will make your heart grow two sizes like in The Grinch when like the ending when his heart is growing two sizes which is probably actually like a very serious medical problem. So I hope that actually doesn't happen. But your little figurative heart will grow three sizes if you read Silas Marner. And with that fun little medical tidbit, that concludes my winter classics recommendations. If you have any winter classics recommendations, please, please, please leave them down below. I would love to read them. I'm sure they would maybe help others as well who are maybe looking for different classic recommendations. If you have read any of these, let me know. If you read any of these after this video, come back and let me know because I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these books, even if you hate them. I'm always interested to hear if people like hate the books that I like because I just think it's really interesting. So even if you hate them, tell me, let me know. I would love to discuss with you. I hope you all have a fabulous winter of reading and I will see you all in the next video.